move directly into our neighborhood outreach program. <coughs> Growth is imperative for us. <coughs> if you don't believe it, turn this way and that and look around. We need a whole lot more people here. This is a good start, but we need more. <coughs> I'd like to begin by posing a question. What brought about you becoming a constitutionalist? You probably didn't wake up one morning and suddenly go, wow, I'm going to be a constitutionalist. Someone showed you the constitution and you liked it. <coughs> Who convinced you of that? What characteristics did this person have that you would listen to them and that they could teach you, they could instruct you? They were kind and likable, I'll bet. This person had your respect, maybe even your gratitude. You seemed to know what they were talking about. They were informative without pushing you away. Things suddenly started to make sense. The things they told you checked out. You had consistent contact with this person through work or church, neighborhoods or hobbies. <clears throat> Creating a constitutional activist requires some steps. First, you must become a friend. Then you must gain respect, then educate them carefully through consistent contact, and finally encourage them to action. If you keep these in the correct order of friendship, respect, and then education, it can happen very quickly. If you get those out of order, it may never happen. Remember when you first learned to ride a bicycle? I bet I know just how this happened. Parents came in early in the morning while you were still sound asleep in your bed. They picked you up, took you out to the garage, placed you on the seat of the bicycle, and your dad ran down the road and pushed you down the biggest hill he could find. Right? <laughs> I look forever to find that. I hope you like it. That says it all. Poor girl's actually riding down a slide. Six flags, I think. Moms and dads love you, and of course, they've never put more on you than you could actually handle safely. And constitutional education works that way also. I know because I tried doing it the wrong way once. I tried pushing my, my infant in the Constitution down the tallest hill I could find. My good friend John and his family accompanied my family on a small trip out of state. After I had received a whole year of careful, thoughtful instruction from my mentor, the late Jim Neuendorf, I had everyone in that van for four and a half hours, John, his wife, and his three children. What a great opportunity to teach them everything I know. <laughs> it didn't go well. John was politically asleep when we started. His great a nice best. house and a wonderful family. He gets to teach kids to feel good every day. All was right in John's world. For four and a half hours, I was tied in the car with him, drilling him on how horrible things were <coughs> in the world. Well, I'm sure John, looking back, was certainly terrified when he arrived at our destination, but not of the condition of our country, but just of me. In case you missed it the first time. <laughs> and what I'd done to him for the last four hours. To this day, John is still not a constitutionalist. I had some very valuable friendship credit with John when we started. Uh, I really cared for John and his family. I had enough respect to actually be a good educator for John. But I squandered it due to my lack of experience. I told him the truth. <clears throat> I made confusing things make sense. But it just didn't work. One big factor, receptive capacity. Receptive capacity. John wasn't ready to hear what I had for him. The capacity to retain what's being taught is a huge issue. A car will burn fuel at a variable rate, depending on speed and load. People will only accept education in the same manner. Don't try to put a whole month of fuel in at once. Learn to read your friend's fuel gauge. There'll be signs to tell you when he's overflowing. Be sensitive and know when to stop the pump. In John's case, he hadn't even taken the gas cap off. 
You need to know that the listener is receptive. If they are receptive, because perhaps they've asked you a question, you need to be concerned about the volume of information you give them. Some people have the educational capacity of the Queen Mary, and some a long boy. There will be times when you need to move on to a better target. Did he say long boy? For education. That doesn't mean you're closing the door on the person you've been talking to. It is, however, better to spend your efforts where you can be successful. Some people will never be activists. Insulting or belittling someone, whether in conversation or debates, is never a good way to convince others of the virtues of the constitutional republic. I'm not saying don't challenge a bad point, just do it with kindness and clarity. How can you get to an influential place with many people in a short amount of time? This neighborhood outreach program is exactly a method for doing that in a great, fun way. Just today, we've been having sewer systems put into our neighborhood, and the people right behind us, D.C. Fleckinger and his family, are having theirs put in. They had a horizontal boring machine. Of course, the few neighbors were out there on a weekend all chatting it up. And my wife and I went out there and talked with them a little bit and said, hey, what about a big shindig with the neighborhood? Getting everybody together, just having a grand old time. They were with us. Just, I mean, just the minute we said it, I'll bring my, my barbecue pit. Hey, maybe we can call in and rent one of those bouncy things for the kids to get inside and have a good time. People are excited about getting together, getting away from TV sets and other things and, and getting to know other people. Why your neighborhood? Well, these people know where you live. I considered putting that terrified little face back up again right here. This makes you appear. It makes you an equal with them. You have more credibility. You have an opportunity because of that um, that a canvasser from who knows where USA would never have. These people will give you the time of day. Your opportunity for friendship and respect is much higher in your own neighborhood. The benefits of success are much greater for you in your own neighborhood. I heard just a few days ago an internet MP3 recording of a woman in Missouri losing her house to the bank. The recording was a phone call conversation she was having with an internet radio program as her house was being confiscated by the local sheriff. She was holding papers received from the judge, or from a judge, in a judgment that gave her possession of the home free and clear. Apparently, the bank she won the judgment from sold the mortgage to another bank and they were after her house through foreclosure. The sheriff was heard on the recording, breaking down her door, throwing her on the floor, and the phone went dead. The internet will not save you from out of control, unconstitutional action by a police force. How much better off would she have been with a neighborhood of constitutionalists capable of offering real protection? What would the sheriff, who needs reelected, have done if even half the neighbors showed up in an outrage. Succeeding in your own neighborhood could be critical to your personal safety. The steps to succeed here are only effective if you truly care about your neighbors. People will know when you care about them and when you're just out to obtain something or sell them something. Methods and tactics. If possible, try to make contact with the more influential people that are already in your neighborhood. You may have neighborhood organizations or, or things that are going on, and get involved in those organizations or create new ones if necessary. There may be ways to impact your neighborhood uh, that you may not have considered. I put out a flyer that's at the uh, desk out there where it's got numerous ideas, everything from bicycling groups for people that are into that to garden clubs and travel clubs and Target archery, NASCAR fans, football fans, volleyball, indoor stuff like sewing and quilting and crafts and woodworking, uh, card game clubs like bridge, euchre, and so forth. These are all great ways to get people together and get them away from the TV set. Organizing a neighborhood watch is a great way also to increase neighborhood security. It will be one of the first things I try to organize after we do this party and get together with everybody. It's a great way also to get face time with your sheriff. Your sheriff's department is always very happy to come out. Even your sheriff himself may show up because he needs uh, votes in order to stay in office. I'll be using the security watch in my neighborhood. Use each meeting to build your neighborhood organization.